Hello everyone, I'm live. I'm back. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Let me confirm if I'm clearly visible, audible. I will start the lecture ahead in a minute. Give me a minute to confirm it. Okay. Uh, just a second. It will hardly take a minute. I guess it's working. I guess it's working. So I welcome you all for this session. A very, very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here. And today I'm here to take a series which I have started in the morning. That is pathology last minute revision. This last minute revision is basically for the students who are going to write their NEET, PG and INICT this month or in the next few days. So I'm going to revise the entire pathology in a compact manner. So first in the series, I will give you many high yielding points, many tables, many mnemonics, all the important points from which MCQs can be framed. So till now in episode one, we have already covered episode one, I guess. You were there, I guess most of the students were there in episode one. If you have missed episode one live, please watch the recording later on. It is available on the YouTube. You can watch it at any time, but you cannot afford missing it. In lecture one, in episode one, I have covered all the stains, possible stains in pathology and microbiology. Expect one MCQ in the stains, on the stains. I have covered all the named cells in pathology. So, Hurdle cell, Eshkoff cell, all the cells. I have, I have enumerated all the possible bodies in pathology. Eshkoff bodies, you know. So, there are many, many bodies. More than 50 or 70 bodies I taught you in the morning in the first lecture. After that, I have taught you all the fixatives, possible fixatives in pathology we have covered that also we have covered the various names of the macrophages we have covered the organs of the hypoxia their vulnerability we have covered brain may various areas which are affected in various diseases so i have apart from it i have told you the table of the rosettes the various type of rosettes and various types of tumors what are so many ibqs can be created on it not only this we have covered everything about the granulomas the granulomatous inflammation how many types of granulomas are there how many examples of granulomas are there and everything about the granulomas, the type of the giant cells. You can expect many, many MCQs in your exam. Um, and many PYQs are also covered in these tables. So you cannot afford missing it. Now it's time to start lecture number two. Episode number two of pathology last minute revision. It's really last minute revision, right? So the next important point, the next important table or mnemonic which I am going to give for the genetic inheritance. We know all the diseases, the genetic diseases, there are five types of inheritance. Some of them are autosomal dominant, some of them are autosomal recessive, some of them are X-linked dominant, some of them are X-linked recessive and some of them are mitochondrial inheritance. They show. Now there is a pedigree, pedigree analysis or pedigree chart for these that uh, the disease is transmitted from one generation to other generation with continuation or with the with skip or without skip. In case of sex link diseases, the X link dominant and X link recessive, you have to see whether father is transmitting the disease to sons or daughter, or whether mother is transmitting the disease to son and daughter. Depending on the percentage, you have to identify which type of inheritance it is. Now, it is a separate thing, pedigree analysis. I am going to take a separate lecture on pedigree analysis in which I will show you the pedigree. And you have to give the diagnosis what type of inheritance it is. Currently, in this lecture, I am going to give you mnemonics for examples of these inheritance. On these inheritance, you get two type of questions. As I have told you, the first question will be the pedigree analysis. You know what is pedigree, right? So, pedigree will be there and you have to identify the type of inheritance. The second will be the examples, examples of, the, uh, of all these inheritance. Tell me the diseases. You can't believe how many questions comes on the examples, right? So, I will give you the example of all. I'm going to give you five mnemonics now. One, one mnemonic for one, one inheritance. Let me start with autosomal dominant. Let me start. Manoj Singh, I will complete the entire pathology in six hours. Almost six to seven hours. Entire pathology in compact manner, it will be completed, right? Stay connected. So, first is autosomal dominant. In autosomal dominant, you can see the mnemonic is dominant itself. Mnemonic is dominant itself. D O M I N A N T. Dominant is the mnemonic. So D stands for dystrophy, myotonic dystrophy. O stands for osteogenesis imperfecta. M stands for Marfan syndrome. I stands for intermittent porphyria. N stands for Noonan syndrome. A stands for two things: achondroplasia, adult polycystic kidney disease. Adult, not infantile. Bala. You know there are two types of PKD. Adult and infantile. Adult one is autosomal dominant, but infantile one is autosomal recessive. You may be knowing that. N is neurofibromatosis and T is tuberous sclerosis. 
सो से दिस फुल फॉर्म अगेन एंड अगेन यू कॉन्ट बिलीव इस पे कितने एमसीक्यूज हैं द टू टाइप ऑफ एमसीक्यूज व्हिच अमंग द फॉलोइंग इज ऑटोसोमल डोमिनेंट यू विल गेट फोर ऑप्शंस एंड वन ऑफ द ऑप्शन इज वन ऑफ देम एंड द रिवर्स वन द डिजीज विल बी गिवन टू यू दैट मार्फन सिंड्रोम बिलोंग्स टू व्हिच इनहेरिटेंस इज इट ऑटोसोमल डोमिनेंट ऑटोसोमल प्रोसेसिव इज इट एक्सलेंट डोमिनेंट एक्सलेंट प्रोसेसिव सो बोथ वेज यू शुड बी प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर इट सो द निमोनिक द निमोनिक इज डोमिनेंट d o m i n a n t say the full form of dominant again and again so that you can learn it d is dystrophy myotonic dystrophy the main dystrophy o is osteogenesis imperfecta m is marfan 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 pe bahut baar question aa chuka hai n is nunan and one and is neurofibromatosis neurofibromatosis type 1 2 both so ek and nunan hai ek neurofibromatosis hai ek and marfan hai i is intermittent porphyria P पे भी पी वाई क्यू है ट्यूबरस क्लेरोसिस राइट ए देर आर टू थिंग्स एडल्ट पी के डी एंड ए कॉन्ट्रोप्लेशिया इन पे पी वाई क्यूज इफ यू आस्क अबाउट द पी वाई क्यूज टू मी ऑन दीज पी वाई क्यूज आर ऑलरेडी आस्क ऑन मायोटोनिक डिस्ट्रॉफी मार्फन सिंड्रोम नूनान सिंड्रोम न्यूरोफाइब्रोमेटोसिस एंड ट्यूबरस क्लेरोसिस एंड एडल्ट पी के डी यू कैन सी कितने पे पी वाई क्यू है इफ यू हैव सॉल्ड योर पी वाई क्यूज यू मे बी नोइंग आई एम राइट राइट कमिंग ऑन द सेकेंड ऑटोजोमल ड्रेसिस autosomal recessive one so give me a mnemonic for autosomal recessive many diseases are autosomal recessive so the mnemonic is big you can see the mnemonic a b c d e f g h s p w so the mnemonic is a b c d e f g h s p w this is the mnemonic in front of you so what is a a stands for two diseases a is albinism and alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency both are a b is beta thalassemia it is a type of anemia as the sickle cell anemia it is also a type of anemia so beta thalassemia as well as sickle cell anemia both are hemolytic anemias both are example of autosomal recessive c say there are uh, main thing is cystic fibrosis cystic fibrosis is the main disease in c c d say ho gaya aapka deafness sensory neural deafness it is a question few years back i guess two years back in fmg dubon johnson b is dubon johnson e is enzyme deficiency which enzyme most common enzyme deficiency is g6pd right a uh, glycogen and lysosomal storage diseases can be there f say fredrick ataxia and fanconi anemia do f and g say galactosemia h se bhi do cheeze hain hematochromatosis and hurlers p say phenyl ketonuria and w pe pyq hai wilson's disease so what are the autosomal recessive one it is a b c d e f g h s p w right there are many double double things also that you have to learn so a is your albinism uh, a is albinism b is beta thalassemia and s is sickle cell anemia right c is cystic fibrosis d is dubon johnson e is enzyme deficiency f is fanconi fredrick ataxia g is galactosemia h is hurler p is phenyl ketonuria and w is wilson there are some double double that you have to learn learn this mnemonic it is it will be very very useful to solve the questions for inheritance Come on the third mnemonic. X-linked dominant. X-linked love dominant. Main are only four diseases on which MCQs come. The mnemonic is FAIR. F A I R. So F stands for facial 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 oral syndrome. A for Alport. Multiple time question is on Alport. You already know Alport is a X-linked dominant. I is incontinenta pigmentosa and R is resistant rickets. So the mnemonic is F A I R. So F stands for facial oral syndrome. A for Alport. R for resistant rickets and I for what is I? I is incontinenta pigments pigmentosa. So please learn this mnemonic fair. The last, the fourth inheritance. There are five type of inheritance. The fourth one is X-linked recessive. X-linked recessive का mnemonic है Graham Bell. Graham Bell. So G G stands G R A H A M. Graham B E W L. So G stands for G6PD deficiency. R stands for retinitis pigmentosa. A for androgen insensitivity, H for two things. Hemophilia पे बहुत PYQ आता है, G6PD deficiency और hemophilia पे. A is adrenoleukodystrophy, M is Menkes disease. B से other dystrophies are there, Becker, Duchenne. B से color blindness भी है. It is last year FMG question. You may be knowing it. E से Emery diffuse dystrophy. So you can see all dystrophies यहाँ पे हैं, लेकिन myotonic dystrophy is autosomal dominant. Dominant का D है वो. L is Lishnian syndrome and L is Lowy syndrome. You got my point. What is the mnemonic? I'm writing the mnemonic. What is the mnemonic? The mnemonic is Graham Bell. Say the full form again and again. G6PD deficiency, retinitis pigmentosa, androgen insensitivity, and adrenal leukodystrophy. The two A. 
एच पी दो है हिमोफीलिया एंड हाइड्रोकेफलस राइट एम इज मैन केस बी से बैकर डुचन डिस्ट्रॉफी ई से एमरी एमरी ड्रूफिस डिस्ट्रॉफी एंड दो एल है सिंड्रोम एंड लोवे सिंड्रोम यू मी तंग सब so these are the excellent recessive the last but not least one is mitochondrial inheritance by the way what is mitochondrial inheritance can anyone tell me what is mitochondrial inheritance mitochondrial inheritance are the diseases which are transmitted from mother to children from mother to sons as well as to daughters but the sons the fathers cannot transmit it ahead only the mothers can transmit it to all the children it is the mitochondrial inheritance right the mitochondrial inheritance is the diseases which are transmitted due to ova of the mother now there is a mnemonic for that the mnemonic is k l m n o p you know in abcd the alphabets so it is in continuation a b c d e f g h i j k k l m n o p so it is k l m n o p k stands for kian sare syndrome l stands for labor labor optic neuropathy is pe bahut bar pyq hua hai labor labor optic dystrophy is an example of mitochondrial inheritance m stands for mer merf और मेलास मेलास पे भी पीवाई क्यू है मेलास का फुल फॉर्म क्या है एम ई एल ए एस माइटोकॉन्ड्रियल इन की पेलोपैथी विद लैक्टिक एसिडोसिस एंड स्ट्रोक लाइक सिंड्रोम दैट इज मेलास एंड इज नार्प नार्प न्यूरोजेनिक एटेक्सिया विद रेटिनेटिस पिगमेंटोसा एन ए आर पी ओ इज ऑफ थर्मोप्लेजिया पी इज पियर्सन सिंड्रोम सो के एल एम एन ओ पी सो लेट मी समराइज लेट मी गिव यू द समरी आई टॉट यू I taught you the genetic inheritance. I taught you the various mnemonics, the various examples of all genetic inheritance. So I have given you five mnemonics, right? Autosomal dominant का mnemonic क्या है? The mnemonic is dominant. D O M I N A N T. This is the mnemonic. Autosomal recessive का what mnemonic I taught you? It is A B C D E F G H S P W. X-linked dominant का only four diseases are X-linked dominant. F A I R. fair a l p o d right and excellent recessive ka graham bell g r a h a m graham bell b e w l l or mitochondrial inheritance ka k l m n o p k l m n o p now learning mnemonic is the most easiest job you can do but the full form of mnemonic is very difficult you have to say the full form again again and again you can see yahan pe bhi uh, d hai yahan pe bhi d hai but both d are different right both the d are different you should know the full form of these d's right a yahan pe bhi hai a yahan pe bhi hai a yahan pe bhi hai do a yahan pe bhi hai so you can see how many a's are there so saying the full form again 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 will help you learning the memorizing the disease you can get two type of questions on the inheritance which of the following is autosomal dominant autosomal recessive or xn dominant xn recessive like this or one of the disease will be given to you neurofibromatosis show which inheritance tuberous sclerosis show which inheritance marfan show which inheritance Osteogenesis perfect imperfecta shows which inheritance sickle cell anemia beta thalassemia frederick ataxia panconi syndrome alport disease right g6pd deficiency retinitis pigmentosa right hemophilias so these are the the pearson one of thalmoplegia leber's dystrophy so in sab pe already pyq hai if you have solved your papers you may be knowing kit maine jitne tick kiye hain these are already your pyqs and new questions can be created on any of them everyone give me a thumbs up so you will be able to solve many questions from these mnemonics right give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up i'm not giving you these mnemonics right now yeah next topic which i'm going to teach you here is amyloidosis amyloidosis let me start amyloidosis expect one question in your exam in amyloidosis most of the students even don't understand what is amyloidosis amyloidosis is a disease in which abnormal protein known as amyloid is formed in the body amyloid is a protein actually it is not a normal protein it is a abnormal protein what is the abnormality in that the protein is insoluble it is not soluble in blood this protein is insoluble it is not soluble in uh, blood and that's why it get deposited in various tissue and causing the diseases the failure of various organs see human body is made up of organs from head to toe we are made up of organs imagine this is any of the organ human body it can be liver kidney spleen heart any organ these are the cells of the organ can you see these are the cells of the organ now the person having amyloidosis abnormal amyloid protein is formed which is insoluble in blood that's why from the blood it will come and get deposited in the space the interstitial space the space between the cell it is a extracellular deposition amyloid get deposited extracellularly it is an abnormal protein which is formed which will get deposited extracellularly compress all the cells that's why organ undergo failure 
this organ undergo failure right so all the organs in human body one by one undergo failure if the person is having amyloidosis right so amyloidosis is a disease in which multiple organ failure is there multiple organ failure is there you got my point give me a thumbs up that is the disease amyloidosis right now the problem what is the point here on which mcqs come mcqs come uh okay what are the points on which MCQs come in amyloidosis? So, what are the type of amyloid, amyloid protein? All amyloid protein are abnormal proteins that will cause organ, uh, you know, failure. But these are the various types of the amyloid. So, you should learn. For each type of amyloid, there is a trigger. There is a trigger. Why this protein is formed in the body? Normal human body do not have amyloid protein. But due to some trigger, it is formed. This is the trigger. Due to some trigger, it is formed in the body from some precursor and this is these are the various types of amyloids. It's the maximum MCQs are there. So, the person is on hemodialysis. If some person is on hemodialysis continuously for many years, he will have a beta 2 type of amyloid formation. A beta 2 amyloid, A beta 2 M, A beta 2 microglobulin type of amyloid. Right. If the person is having a familial amyloidotropic polyneuropathy since many years or the person is having sunai Senile heart failure, senile cardiac failure, senile CHF, congestive heart failure. He is having ATTR. What is the full form of ATTR? Amyloid TTR is transthyrin. Transthyrin TTR. So, amyloid transthyrin type of amyloid. It is a type of amyloid. If the person is having a dementia due to Alzheimer, the person is having A beta. Ye a beta to microglobulin alag hai, A beta alag hai. Right? So, you have to learn these ones. These are the important ones. The others are in front of you. Ye teen pe multiple time MCQs aya hua hai. So, the MCQ will be like this, a 42-year male, it will be like a story, a 42-year male uh, having bilateral renal failure is known case of diabetes mellitus since 20 years, uncontrolled diabetes. And now he is having bilateral renal failure since last 5 years and now the person is on hemodialysis. After, since last 5 years, the person is on hemodialysis because of bilateral renal failure. Now, the person is developing uh, some extracellular deposition disease in multiple organ. So, which type of amyloid is it? So, they can ask the diagnosis. They can ask the type of amyloid. The answer will be A beta 2 microglobulin. Because the person is on hemodialysis, that is the trigger for this. Right. The same other way of the question can be asked a 85-year-old male having left heart failure because of which the person is having dyspnea. The person is died. On autopsy, on autopsy, you find multiple organs are stiff. They are enlarged in size and there is a pink color eosinophilic material deposited extracellularly in multiple organs. So, name that material, extracellular material. So, of course, it is a typical case of amyloidosis. It is senile congestive heart failure. So, answer will be ATTR. That is transthyrin type of amyloid. So, these type of questions can come in your exam based on amyloidosis. If the trigger is hemodialysis, go with A beta 2. If the trigger is Alzheimer, Go with A beta. If the trigger is Sanai heart failure, go with ATTR. Everyone give me a thumbs up. You got this point? You got this point? The next important point here is the various types of pneumoconiasis. Do you know various types of pneumoconiasis? All these are lung disease. In the lung, these are the disease due to deposition of some substance in the lung. So, if the coal dust is there, the person can have anthracosis. Anthracosis is due to coal dust. Asbestos ki wajah se asbestosis hoga, this question will not come in your exam, it is very easy, right? Silica ki wajah se silicosis hoga, again this will not come. Bagas ki wajah se bagosis hoga, but what is bagas? Bagas is basically cardboard, paper or sugar industry. So, if any person is working in cardboard industry, paper industry or sugar industry, after many years the person can have bagosis. And if the person is working in a cotton industry, textile industry, the person will have bisinosis. Bisinosis is due to culture. You got my point. So, always students have confusion between bagosis and bisinosis. Right. Both are occupational hazards. If the person, any person, imagine a person working in cardboard factory, working in paper factory or working in sugar factory, he will have bagosis in future. He is prone to have bagosis. If the person is working in cotton industry, textile industry, right, hemp industry, so he is prone to have bisinosis. Both are with B. Don't get confused. One is bagosis. And one is bisinosis. You got my point? You got my point? If the person is mining, mining may asbestos hoga. So, the person will have asbestos. Right? If the person is working in a stone cutting factory, sand blasting factory, usme silica hota hai. So, that's why the person will have silicosis. If the person is a coal miner, he is working in a mine having coal. So, he will have anthracosis. In sub-PP MCQs, in your exam. Give me a thumbs up. 
come on give me a thumbs up you got this table this is the table called nemoconiasis small table the next important is the anemias you know there are three type of anemias we all know microcytic hypochromic normocytic normochromic macrocytic normochromic these are the three type of anemias we all know first give me a thumbs up you got till now first give me a thumbs up now tell me the examples of each type of anemia exam me question aa jayega sickle cell anemia is a type of which anemia iron deficiency anemia is a type of which anemia out of these three thalassemia is a type of which anemia you tell me citrobrastic anemia is a type of which anemia megaloblastic anemia is a type of which anemia aplastic anemia is a type of which anemia so you should know all the anemias they belong to which type among these three this is the morphological classification of anemia what do you mean by morphological classification of anemia what do you mean by morphological what do you mean by the three terminologies what are these three i will give you the mnemonic for that right i will i will give you three mnemonic one mnemonic for microcytic hypochromic one mnemonic for macrocytic normochromic and one mnemonic for normocytic normochromic so you can identify the type of anemia belonging to which category first understand the meaning of these types right now there are two type the two terminologies cystic and chromic right cystic and chromic what do you mean by that the word cystic means size and word chroma means color so first tell me normal rbc ka size or color kya hota hai what is the size and color of normal rbc first tell me if you say a normal rbc the size of a normal rbc is 7 micrometer the diameter is 7 micrometer right and if you say the color color of a normal rbc so rbc don't have a nucleus these are non nucleated cells they have hemoglobin at the periphery not at the center so periphery periphery two third is colored peripheral two third but central one third is empty the central one third is known as pallor pallor it is normal this is a diagram of a normal rbc in a normal rbc if you talk about the size the diameter is 7 micrometer and the color peripheral two third is colored but central one third is not colored it is known as central one third pallor so the size and color of a normal rbc is this so tell me what is the summary what is the size of normal rbc and what is the color of normal rbc who will tell me what is the size size is 7 micrometer and what is the color color is peripheral two third color but central one third is empty it is pallor peripheral two third have hemoglobin that's why it is colored this is normal this is normal we all have these normal rbcs it is not anemia it is normal right now this 7 micrometer looking at a slide just suppose you are giving me a slide ma'am see this slide it is a smear on this smear there are multiple rbcs tell me the type of the anemia so i have to see the size of the rbc but in microscope i don't use a scale to measure all the size of the rbcs that is it is 7 micrometer yes or no so the point is that rbc ka diameter i have told you it is 7 micrometer right but it can be small it can be large depending on the type of anemia depending type of anemia is microcytic or macrocytic but the size of a lymphocyte small lymphocyte this is a lymphocyte not rbc it is a small lymphocyte the size of a small lymphocyte is also 7 micrometer it will never change it is fixed in any anemia it is fixed whether microcytic macrocytic the size remains 7 micrometer so basically on a slide i am giving you a slide to see whether the rbcs are microcytic macrocytic or normocytic so you have to see the size of the rbc so in this smear multiple rbcs are there and in this smear multiple lymphocytes are also there right so you have to compare the size of the rbc with the lymphocyte objectively you don't use the scale you don't have to do it um, objectively you just do it subjectively ki whether it is looking same size so it is normocytic it is 7 micrometer the rbc is smaller it is microcytic and the rbc is larger it is macrocytic so we do the comparison using a lymphocyte you got my point so coming on the next point the three types of the anemia i am telling you two things cystic matlab hota hai size and chroma ka matlab hota hai chromic chroma chroma dictionary meaning of chroma is color color if a anemia the rbc is of normal size and normal color so that anemia is known as normocytic normochromic give me a thumbs up the first type of anemia normocytic normochromic so size of rbc is also normal that is 7 micrometer same as that of a lymphocyte and the color of rbc is also normal that is central one third is pallor and peripheral two third is fit give me a thumbs up so that is normocytic normochromic the first type of uh, anemia the second type of anemia the size of rbc is smaller than 7 micrometer so it is microcytic microcytic and hypochromic color is also less hypochromic 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 so microcytic and hypochromic so color is also less here normo normo ho gaya micro or hypo so size is less color is less size is less 
known as microcytic and color is less known as hypochromic right uh, color less means peripheral two third is less filled so central one third pilar will be enlarged central one third pilar will be enlarged and peripheral rim of the color will be there that is the second type the third type of anemia the size of the rbc is large it is known as macrocytic anemia size is large but color never increases it is a rule color will remain normal here only right so macrocytic normochromic you got my point you got my point let me summarize again the three classification the three morphological types of uh, anemia cytic and chromic cytic means size and chroma means color see see how beautifully i am telling you here normocytic normochromic right microcytic hypochromic and macrocytic normochromic everyone give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up you got my point so here it is normo normo the first is normo normo the size is normal color is normal the second is microcytic the size is less and color is also less so microcytic hypochromic micro hypo the third the size is more it is macrocytic but color never more so it will remain normo only so see the two, three um, the types of anemias are in front of you normocytic normochromic microcytic hypochromic macrocytic normochromic first everyone give me a thumbs up if you got it so that is the classification students always get confused ma'am micro hypo i'm not getting so one is cytic one is chromic so decide cytic me se tumhe kya lena hai cytic is size decide that and chroma me se tumhe kya lena hai you have three possibilities either take both of them normal or take both of them less or size is more but color is normal color is never never so that is the three types of anemia now the thing is okay you got the morphology you can see the slide you can see the three slides in the three slides okay see the first slide this is a lymphocyte compare all the rbcs with lymphocyte i guess all the rbcs are smaller than lymphocyte size wise they are smaller and color wise also the central pilar is enlarged the color at the periphery is less that's why it is microcytic hypochromic anemia see the second slide here you can find a lymphocyte see the size of the rbc rbcs are bigger than lymphocyte the color is normal central one third is pilar so it is macrocytic normal the third type you can see uh, again a lymphocyte here and you can find all the rbcs are same as that of lymphocyte and color is also normal normocytic normal what my point no no slide no image or no slide will come no peripheral smear will come in your exam without a lymphocyte without lymphocyte you cannot comment on cytic you cannot comment on size but without lymphocyte you can comment on chroma chroma or color ka nothing to do with lymphocyte you require a lymphocyte to comment on the size of rbc you do not require lymphocyte to comment on the color color can be commented without lymphocyte you got my point that is the basic issue now tell me the examples tell me the examples okay let me start with microcytic hypochromic the first type of anemia micro hypo so size is less color is less right there are only four anemias which are microcytic and hypochromic the mnemonic is cita s i t a cita s i t a the mnemonic is cita s is sideroblastic anemia i is iron deficiency anemia ida t is thalassemia and a is anemia of chronic disease so cita is the mnemonic give me a thumbs up fatafat give me a thumbs up you got my point only four anemias in the world cita four anemias in the world have microcytic hypochromic anemia so size of rbc is less color of rbc is less microcytic hypochromic let me come on macrocytic normochromic so here size is more but color is normal macrocytic normochromic anemias so again four anemias are there the mnemonic is lady harding medical college lhmc the mnemonic is lady harding you know lady harding medical college so lady harding one of the best medical college in india lady harding medical college lhmc so l stands for liver diseases especially alcoholic especially cirrhosis alcoholic cirrhotics are anemic they have megaloblastic anemia they have macrocytic anemia h is hypothyroidism hypothyroidism persons also have macrocytic anemia that m m is megaloblastic anemia you know megaloblastic anemia occurs due to two, two deficiency either vitamin b12 or folic acid so dono ke deficiency aa jayegi and c is cytotoxic drugs patient on some drugs like phenytoin or methotrexate it is an anti cancer drug unko bhi anemia hota hai so that anemia is macrocytic anemia give me a thumbs up so lady harding medical college let me come on the last type of anemia normocytic normochromic size is normal color is normal so here you have to see the retic count here i cannot tell you directly so if the retic count is high it has to be hemolytic anemia so all hemolytic anemias are normocytic normochromic with high retic count so the mnemonic is shape either you learn the mnemonic or if you know all hemolytic anemias don't learn the mnemonic so shape contains the five type of hemolytic anemias you may be knowing five type of hemolytic anemias you know the classification of hemolytic anemia s is sickle cell anemia 
H is hereditary spherocytosis. A is autoimmune hemolytic anemia. A I H A. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia. P is paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinemia. Uh, globinuria P and H. And E is enzyme deficiency. Most commonly it is G6PD. So the mnemonic is shape S H A P E. Give me a thumbs up with low retic count. Now coming on the next. The, the anemia is still normocytic normochromic. But retic count is high. Uh, retic count is not high, retic count is low. So it is not a hemolytic anemia, it is something else. So the mnemonic is Ramchandra. Yapi Sita Aitina, now Ramchandra. Ramchandra. R stands for renal failure, A stands for anemia of chronic disease, M for myelofibrosis, and Chandraka C is for some cancers. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. This is approach towards anemia. This is known as approach. Not only approach, you will get multiple MCQs cracked from these mnemonic. My ultimate target is that. In the last time, now you have few days left for your exam. If you are if you are targeting this year INICT, this year NEET PG or this year FMG, you have very few days left. Left. You cannot revise page to page revision. Karna possible nahi hai. You cannot revise entire Robbins now. So revise only high yielding points. This means the probability of coming question is very very high. It is a probability. I cannot guarantee, but I can say probability is very high. So take a chance. Of course, you have to take a chance. Let me tell you the approach towards anemia. As I've told you, there are three types of anemia. So what are the three types of anemia? The first anemia is microcytic hypochromic. This is microcytic. The size is less. Hypochromic, the color is less. The second type of anemia is macrocytic and normochromic. Right. So size is more, but color is normal. Right. Normochromic. The third type of anemia is normocytic normochromic. Both are normal. So first comment on size, then comment of color. It is a rule. So, microcytic hypochromic, first size, then color. Nor macrocytic normochromic, first size, then color. Normocytic normochromic, first size, then color. Citric is size, chroma is color. I guess everyone of you got it. Now, tell me the names of anemia. How many anemias you know? So in microcytic hypochromic, there are four anemias. The mnemonic is Sita. Right. In macrocytic normochromic, again, four anemias. The mnemonic is Lady Harding Medical College. Right. Lady Harding. First, ye complete karo. Then, I will come on normal, normal. Then, I will come on. Tell me the mnemonic, full form of Sita. It is sidroblastic anemia. It is iron deficiency anemia. It is thalassemia. And it is anemia of chronic disease. Anemia of chronic disease, ACD. Everyone give me a thumbs up. So these four anemias, Sita, S-I-T-A, Sita. Sita is micro hypo. Sita is micro, Sita is hypo. So learn like that. Sita is micro, Sita is hypo. You will never forget. Macrocytic normochromic with the mnemonic is yes, Osama. Very good. It is Lady Harding Medical College. Can you tell me the full form of Lady Harding Medical College? It is liver disease. That is cirrhosis, alcoholic cirrhosis, right? So these patients always have anemia, but macrocytic anemia. H. What is H? H is hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism, TSH is less, right? I'm sorry. TSH, TSH is more. T3, T4 is less. So hypothyroidism always have macrocytic uh, macro, um, uh, uh, anemia, right? The third is megaloblastic, the main anemia. Macrocytic, me tum sabko ek hi naam yaad hai megaloblastic. If I ask you example, macrocytic anemia, you will only say megaloblastic. You will not say the other three. Megaloblastic anemia, everyone knows vitamin B12 or folic acid deficiency se hota hai. So megaloblastic anemia is a type of macrocytic anemia. Last is cytotoxic drug. How many cytotoxic drugs? Methotrexate is one of them. Phanitoin is one of them. Methotrexate is an anti-cancer drug. Phanitoin is an anti-epileptic drug. All these causes macrocytic anemia. Okay. Still now, the concepts are clear. Let me move further. Okay. If it is normocytic, normochromic, you have to see the retic count. If retic count is high, what is the mnemonic? If retic count is low, what is the mnemonic? So, if retic count is high, so all normocytic, normochromic anemias with high retic count are basically hemolytic anemias. Are basically, how many hemolytic anemias you know? Do you know some hemolytic anemias? I guess you may be knowing. So, there are five hemolytic anemias. The mnemonic is shape. S-H-A-P. Shape. It is... What, are, what is the full form of uh, shape? So, what is S? S kya hai pe? What is S? It is sickle cell anemia. Right. What is he? Hereditary spherocytosis. H. A. Autoimmune hemolytic anemia. A I H A. P. Paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. And E is enzyme deficiency. Which enzyme? The most common is G6PD. G6PD deficiency. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Everyone. Now, the normocytic normochromic anemia with low retic count. With low retic count. So, these are not hemolytic anemia. That is something else. Mnemonic is Ram, Ram Chandra. Ram Chandra is the mnemonic. So what is R? It is renal failure, right? A, anemia of chronic disease, yahan bhi aa jayega. M, myelofibrosis, myelofibrosis. 
and C is cancer, some of the cancers. You can see how many questions can be framed from approach of anemia. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Osama, absolutely right and thank you for participation. Very good, very good, absolutely correct. So yes, Lavanya, Osama, absolutely correct. Should I proceed ahead? Should I proceed to the next mnemonic? Okay. Uh, so that is the same thing written here. Microcytic hypochromic anemia, Sita. I guess everyone knows the full form of Sita. It's very MCQs are there. In your PYQs also, you may have seen MCQs on that. Same MCQs are, same mnemonics are written here. The next important point here, which I would like to add here is the transplant. How many types of transplant you know? Okay. In any organ transplant, you have a donor with you. Just suppose this person is donor and this person is recipient. This person is recipient. This person is recipient. This one is recipient and this one is donor. So, donor give the graft to the recipient. This is the arrow. You can see donor give the graft to the recipient. And the mechanism, the, 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 this is known as transplant. So, some transplant. Transplant is a organ or a tissue which is, which is transferred from the donor body to the recipient body. How many types of transplant are there? Based on the type of the donor. Donor on it. Uske basis pe char type ke transplant hai. What are the four types of transplant? Let me tell you. Some cases donor is recipient himself. Donor or recipient ek hi hota hai. So from the donor just suppose there is a person who is planning an elective surgery few days after. The surgery is elective. It is planned. Hernia surgery or some elective surgery. It is not emergency. Right. Some cosmetic surgery. And during surgery it is, it is known the patient may require blood. One or two unit of the blood. So what the patient can do, the patient, the recipient will donate the blood and ask the blood bank to keep the blood with them in the blood bank. And at the time of the, at the, time of the surgery, uh, the blood will be withdrawn. So usi ka blood usi ko transfuse, transfuse kar rahe hai. Or ye example, the person is having burns over the face, right? So what we will do, skin transplant. We will take the skin from the thigh or we will take the skin from the chest and transplant it on the face, right? So same person is the donor, same person is the recipient. What is such transplant known as? That is the best transplant rejection occurs never. Here, donor and recipient is safe. That's why there is no chance of any rejection. This transplant is known as auto transplant. Auto transplant. That is the best transplant. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Donor and recipient is safe. Right. So this is the best. But every time it is not possible. So if the person is having liver failure, renal failure or some organ transplant. So you cannot. So organ is already damaged. No? So you require some other donor. So if the other donor, the best thing, if the other donor is a identical twin, identical twin, there are two types of twin, identical twin with gen, genes are um, the actually matching is uh, maximum, right? So chances of rejection are least. If someone is having an identical twin and that can be the donor for the recipient, for the patient, that's the best thing, right? Auto transplant possible nahi hai to do iso transplant. In iso transplant, the donor is the identical twin. I'm not talking about non-identical identical twin. You know the two types of twin, no? diamniotic, dichorionic, monoamniotic, monochorionic. So I'm talking about monoamniotic, monochorionic twin. That is identical twin. I'm not talking about diamniotic, dichorionic twin. These are like two siblings only. Non-identical twin only thing they are born together. Otherwise, they are normal siblings. They are not twin. They are not genetically, they are not twins. So I'm talking about genetical twin. So that is an isotransplant. You got my point? Uh, the third thing, uh, no, not everyone is so lucky to have a twin. I don't have an identical twin. I guess many of you also don't have an identical twin. Not every person are so lucky to have identical twin, right? So if if recipient, if patient is such a patient who don't have a twin, then what you will do? And he requires some organ. So some of the family members, parents, children, sibling, or some of the friends, or anyone from the community, any human. The, the best thing is the human, the same species, any human. Just the actually matching, uh, actually matching will be maximum. So we will match the actually of all. We will match the actually of the parents, of the children, of the sibling, of the friends. Just me actually ma ma matching maximum. Who we will select that as a donor if multiple options are there. Give me a thumbs up. So if the donor is any other human being, same species, the, both are uh, humans, donor and recipient. It is known as allo transplant, the third best possible. But here chances of rejection are high because never. 100% actually matching is never there. 100% matching occurs only in identical twins. Otherwise, 100. So, you try to, to match it maximum. Maybe if twins are not there, siblings are there, brothers or sisters are there. So, matching can be up to 80%, 85%, 90%. So, try to do maximum actually matching. Why you are doing actually matching? 
so you do not want the transplant get rejected after getting transplanted in the body so you are transplanting some organ from here to there so here if hla matching is not there wbcs of the recipient will destroy the organ that is known as rejection you do not want rejection of the organ after surgery that's why you are trying to match it maximum anything foreign in the body is destroyed by wbc it is a tendency of wbc so all humans wbc are the army anything foreign come that wbc will destroy the foreign thing so the organ is a foreign thing here right that is the thing so that is the allo transplant right the last transplant which is not done but yeah for enumeration i should say from some other species so cow you know cow goat horse organ of some other species is given to the human some other species not human other species that is the worst worst transplant rejection is always there that is known as deno transplant so what are the four types of transplant what are the four types of transplant i taught you auto transplant that is donor and recipient is same person the donor is the same person which is the recipient that is the best transplant second is iso transplant also known as synergic transplant in which the donor is a identical twin that is a genetically identical person right that is the second best third is a allo transplant allo graft here two genetically non identical persons but same species both are humans so both can be brother sister both can be sibling two sisters two brothers father and the son any combination is possible right but both are humans the last the worst one is the zeno zeno one in which some other species the organ is transplanted from one species to other species so you can see the heart of cow <coughs> for the walls for seen heart wall transplants it was done in the previous era but not now it is give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up these are the four types of transplant based on the donor auto same human being is the donor iso identical twin is the donor allo person from the same species any human being is a donor and zeno person from not person animal from some other species will be the donor allo is known as homo because both are humans and zeno is known as hetero one is human one is someone else some other animal and iso is known as synergistic so you should understand the other names so tell me which is best one which is worst one tell me the sequence so the sequence wise it is auto the best one followed by iso followed by allo followed by zeno so this one is the best chances of rejection are least and here this one is the worst because chances of rejection are maximum give me a thumbs up that is about the transplants many questions the simple questions come from the transplant give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up the next point is the rejection now still rejection suffers rejection occurs so if you are if you are transferring a organ from the donor to the recipient even after taking all the care rejection do not occur never occur in auto rejection chances are least less than 1% in iso because genetically identical twins are there but chances of rejections are there in allo and zeno zeno to karte hi nahi hai aajkal allo mein bhi chances of rejection are high if you don't find a donor which is perfect hla matching right so rejections are there so how many types of rejections are there the next point okay rejections are of two types okay listen now let me draw the body of a donor and recipient again to tell you the types of the rejection okay this is donor and this is recipient let me draw the recipient let me draw the recipient you are taking the organ from the donor to the recipient of course right so this is a organ inside the donor right you are taking this organ and taking transplanting it into the recipient so two ot's functional simultaneously so two teams of doctor work one team of doctors the surgeons work on the donor they just take the organ out right and another team of doctors the surgeons they are ready as soon as they get the transplant they will start the surgery in the recipient you cannot keep the transplant outside the body for much hours but if the cities are different we know so there are some vital tissues vital uh, fluids in which we we do the, this transfer you know that right so uh, but still the transfer should be earliest as soon as it comes out of the body it should be given inside the body otherwise cells inside this transplant will start dying with start autolysis we do not want that anyways you are transferring the organ from the donor to the recipient so listen listen now this is the blood vessel of recipient let me draw the blood vessel of recipient the blood vessel of the recipient contains wbcs these are the wbcs wbcs kill any foreign thing whenever the wbcs of the recipient kill the cells inside the transplant from the donor this is known as host versus graft the host the recipient is the host the recipient is the host now host versus graft rejection give me a thumbs up host is doing rejection to the graft 
give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up sometime reverse happen what happens sometime the wpc is the t lymphocyte present inside the graft the lymphocyte present inside the graft after getting transplanted into the recipient body these these lymphocyte will cause damage to the recipient body not it is not the lymphocyte of recipient it is the lymphocyte present inside the graft these are the donor lymphocyte give me a thumbs up so this is known as graft versus host the graft is causing damage to the host the wpc of the graft are causing damage to the host so two types of rejection are there host versus graft and graft versus host so depending wpc kiske hain more common is host versus graft graft versus host kisme hoga the, the the tissue contains all our body organs contain a small amount of lymphocytes so whether it is kidney liver they contain small amount of lymphocytes so if the organ is transplanted from donor to recipient if the recipient is immunocompromised immunocompromised if the patient is having aids if the patient is on chemotherapy if the patient is on steroid that is immunocompromised in those persons the own lymphocytes are non functional so usme fir graft ke lymphocyte will become hyperactive give me a thumbs up so in those persons you will have gvht otherwise you will have H hvgd there are two types of thing hv hvgd host versus graft disease and graft versus host disease graft versus host occurs in immunocompromised person you got the concept give me a thumbs up if you got the concept everyone give me a thumbs up if you got the concept now as i have told you more common is host versus graft in which wpc of the host causing damage to the graft it is of three type hyper acute acute and chronic what do you mean by that so again i would like to draw, draw a diagram so this is the recipient this is the recipient right and this is the donor this is the donor listen now as i have told you two teams of doctor work simultaneously the team of the doctor work on donor they take the organ out another team is ready with the recipient to keep the to put the transplant immediately as it comes out of the body of the donor two parallel ot's in the preferably in the same hospital we do it right so that is a thing so as soon as the recipient wala team got the transplant they they do the transplant so they are implanting the tissue the transplant the organ inside the recipient body so sometimes even on ot table instantly as soon as the transplant is put it is rejected instant it is instant 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 the word meaning is instant on ot table only before putting sutures so the surgeon can see with the naked eye the surgeon while putting a kidney the kidney convert red immediately after putting and transplanting the kidney convert red congested and you know edematous so it is rejected on the table only so no need to keep it inside the body take it out this rejection is known as hyper acute this rejection is known as hyper acute rejection give me a thumbs up so why hyper acute rejection is there why it is so fast because the recipient body already having antibodies against the uh, you know antigens present on the tissue antibodies are pre formed it is pre formed so this recipient already exposed to this tissue previously either this tissue or some antigen of this tissue so body has already formed the antibodies so as soon as the surgeon is putting the graft in the body of the recipient the antibodies will act will start destroying the graft antigen antibody reaction takes place and the graft rejection takes place so hyper acute is always antibody mediated give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up that is the first thing the second type on ot table rejection doesn't occur so surgeon is happy surgeon will suture do the suture close the case and within 6 months within 6 months of the surgery the graft is rejected the transplant is rejected that is known as acute that is known as acute and after 6 months if it occurs it is known as chronic so there are three types the mechanism of all is different hyper acute acute and chronic hyper acute is instantly on ot table acute is within 6 months and chronic is more than 6 months right and graft versus host ko ek alag hi cheez hai उसके कोई टाइप्स नहीं है देर आर नो फर्दर टाइप्स फॉर जी वी एच डी दीज थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ एच एच वी जी डी यू नो हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी समवन टॉट यू हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी इन माइक्रोबायोलॉजी समवन हैव टॉट यू देर आर फोर टाइप्स ऑफ हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी रिएक्शन टाइप वन टाइप टू टाइप थ्री एंड टाइप फोर यू मे बी नोइंग सो विच रिजेक्शन इज विच टाइप ऑफ हाइपर सेंसिटिविटी तो आई कैन से ऑल ऑफ देम आर टाइप टू एक्सेप्ट हाइपर एक्यूट विच इज एंटीबॉडी मीडिएटेड ह्यूमरल इम्यूनिटी विच इज टाइप टू रेस्ट ऑल आर टाइप so this is the summary of rejection so rejection let me summarize rejection rejection transplant rejection is of two type two type hvgd and gvhd you i guess everyone knows it wrong right hvgd is again of three type hyper acute acute and chronic 
I guess everyone knows it. Now tell me the types. Who will tell me the types? Type of hypersensitivity for each of them. So this one is type 2. The rest all are type 4. Type 4. Type 4. In sub pe MCQs aate hain. I am trying to summarize the things at one place. Now you can understand the meaning. You can understand the mechanism. You can tell me the type of hypersensitivity in case of rejection. You can tell me the type of the transplant. That is all about transplant. The types of the transplant. Rejections of the transplant question comes on these two things. You should be able to answer them correctly. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Every month. I will continue my lecture. But now my lecture will be continued on the app. It is a free class like YouTube only. The link is expiring. I will continue the lecture ahead. In the next lecture that is episode number 3, 4 and 5. I am having 3 more hours of lecture. So this lecture episode number 3, episode number 4, episode number 5 of pathology last minute revision. I am continuing episode 1 and 2 is already done on the YouTube. So, 3, 4, 5, I will continue on the app. Episode 3 is at 10 o'clock. Right now, after 5 minutes. Episode 4 is at 11.15. And episode 5 is at 12.30. So, in continuity, back to back, I am going to teach you 3 more hours pathology in which I will cover another important points in the entire pathology. But now, I have already given you important tables, important, you know, pearls, one-liners. Now, in the next 3 hours, I will take chapter by chapter. So, in half an hour, I will complete one one system. So, first, I will start with general pathology. So, in the first lecture, I will give you entire gist of general pathology. So, that is the first chapter, cell injury, cell adoption, cell death, apoptosis, necrosis, neoplasia and inflammation. So, these three chapters I am going to cover here. And here, I am going to start the systemic pathology. So, in the next three hours, not everything, only important points. I cannot teach you everything, of course, in the three hours. But only the important, important, important points. But now I will teach you chapter wise, topic wise. So those who are interested to continue with pathology, please join me on Unacademy Learners app. If you have not installed the app yet, now go to the Play Store. Install Unacademy Learners app from the Play Store. It is easy to install. And after installing, once you install Unacademy Learners app from the Play Store, select the goal as need PG. Need PG. Select the category. Need PG is a category for all medical studies. Right. Select that category. After selecting that category, under that category, search my name. My name is Dr. Priyanka Sajdev. Can you see the spelling? Spell it correctly. Dr. Priyanka Sajdev. You will find my name. Once you will find my name, you can see me live. You can see me live there. So please do this every month. Those who want to attend my lecture on the app. It is a free lecture. Yeah. If you are a newcomer, you will require a code to unlock it. If you are a newcomer on the app, you will require a code to attend my lecture. The lecture is free. The lecture pathology last minute revision is free. It is like YouTube only but not on YouTube. It is on Unacademy Learners app. Unacademy Learners app. The lecture is free but you will require a code to unlock it if you are a newcomer. Code is Sachdev 10. My surname is Sachdev. S-A-C-H-D-E-V. Sachdev 10 is the code. So please note down the code for the newcomers. You got my point? You got my point? Okay. So, don't forget to write your feedback. If you like the lecture before leaving, please click on the like button. Share with all your friends, colleagues. Follow my profile link on an academy. Search my name. You will get my profile link. Follow it. You will get all my recordings till date. What I have taken on the app. More than 1000 recordings are available. That is free. You can watch any recording and download the PDF of any notes. Only thing you will require a code to unlock it. The code is such. That's about the free classes. On an academy, we have paid version also. You can imagine if the free classes are so informative, so useful, how the paid version will be. You can imagine. In the paid version, we will cover entire syllabus of all 19 subjects as a team. As a team, we are many educators. We work as a team, and we will cover your all 19 subjects for the preparation of your all competitive exams. Whether it is NEET, PG, FMG, INICT, or from next year it is next, or whether it is USMLE. We will cover all with your university exam. So give us a chance. Why don't you give us a chance and give it a trial, right? So if you take plus subscription, you will get only an academy. If you get I take iconic along with an academy, you will get prep letter also. Better to go with the iconic. Additional prep letter will run. And price difference is not much, right? In live subscription, you will get only test series, not videos. In MBBS first year subscription, you will get only anatomy, physiology and biochemistry, not other subjects. So whatever your choice, whatever your wish, you can go with that subscription, right? The various plans are available in front of you for each subscription. Longer the subscription, cheaper it is. So if you're a first prof, second prof, you should opt for three year, four year, two year subscription. Per month wise, it is cheaper. But if you are not sure, why don't you give a trial only for two months? If you like it, you can extend it. If you don't like it, it's over. So give it a trial of at least two months. You yourself will re realize how useful these subscriptions are. 
these are the live classes right and before purchasing buying any subscription in the payment apply my code my code is suchdev10 s a c h d e v suchdev10 is the code if you apply this code before payment you will get maximum discount in the prices minimum 10% discount is guaranteed with this code so thank you very much for being with me and uh, join me just after 2 minutes on the app if you want to continue pathology last minute revision it is a free class thank you very much